Once you have your keywords established, the next step is to go to the Capilano University Library. I'm already there on this screen, um, but if you've never been there before, what I usually just do is just Google Capilano Library, and it's oftentimes the first result that comes up for me. There it is. And what you're looking for is this, um, this page that has the green background. If you find yourself on a page that has the blue background, that's just Capilano, you've gotten, you've gotten yourself to the normal university website, not the library website. So right now we're on the library website. All right, so this is, um, this search box right in the middle of the home page is where we're gonna look today. Um, and this is where we're gonna play around with different keywords that we came up with in the last round, the last video, last activity. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of different searches um, to demonstrate how you would do this. And um, the first example I'm going to use is, um, let's say that I want to find articles or research that's out there on um, the connection between public art and community. Um, I want to find papers that mention these things. So I'm going to say public art as my first keyword. And um, as you saw in the last video, we put quotation marks around it. And then I'm going to type in community as well. So you can see here, I didn't type in a whole sentence. I didn't type in very many words. I just typed in two things, public art with quotation marks around it and community. And I'm going to click search. Now what you're going to get back here is a lot of results from a lot of different databases from the library website. Um, so you're going to get lots of journal articles, news articles, you're also going to see all the books and ebooks that we have in the library, and any media like video that we have in the library as well. So it's kind of like a place to catch a little bit of everything, um, but as you can see it's actually a lot of everything because my results are over 36,000. So what I recommend doing for your first couple of searches is just doing really simple searches where you combine two things. So in this example, I did public art and community. You might do something different. You might do green spaces community or um, uh, green spaces mental health or public art mental health. So just do try different combinations based on what it is that you're proposing. This is your results list, and you can see with each item that you'll get see the title of what the, the result is and what type of format it's in. So this one here, Dialogues in Public Art, is an ebook that you can read online. The second one here is uh, Dialogues in Public Art. It's actually the exact same book as this one here, but this one is the physical copy of the book. So obviously you guys can't access any physical books right now. You can see it's on the second floor in our library. But um, I do want to just say one thing about that. If you guys do, f you can always click on the, um, the title of a book that you find. If you do find any books and you see this here is a table of contents, so you can see the title of each chapter. If you do find any books that aren't available as an ebook and you see a chapter that you want to read, I'm in the office, so I can actually scan it for you. So you just need to send me an email and tell me what it is that you want. Obviously, I can't scan the whole book for you, but if you see a chapter um, or you find a book that you think looks good, but you want me to check the table of contents um, in person if it's not listed on the catalog, or if you want me to check the index to see if there's anything good in there, I'm happy to do that for you. Um, so it'll just depend on what you're proposing, which of these will be relevant to you, right? Um, so here's a great one. A change of heart. Public art can do a lot to promote the health of our communities if planners understand all the new roles it can play. Um, this actually looks pretty applicable to some of your projects. So you can go ahead and you can click on it. And this takes you to a page that usually, if it's an, if it's an article, it will have an abstract of the article. An abstract is a short, a one paragraph summary of the article so that you understand what it's about before you read the whole thing. If you think the, the abstract looks good, you can go ahead and click on PDF full text. And here's the article right here. 
So something like this could bring you some really interesting data or information that you can incorporate right into your, your report. So that one looked pretty good. Um, let's see here. Public Art Fosters Creative Class Community Downtown. Now this is about a city called Boise, but that's okay. Um, sometimes if, you know, obviously there's not gonna be that much written about North Van. So if you see something that's written about another city, great. If something in your proposal is talking about bringing creative people together in the community space, this one could be very useful for you. Uh, look at this one, Conversations in Clay. Engaging community through a socially engaged public art project. Well, I'm pretty interested in this one, so let's take a look at the abstract. Uh, let's see here. Okay, interesting. All right, so this one's about uh, something that happened in Atlanta. Again, a different city is totally fine. It's about art making in a public space and how um, that encourages interaction between community members. Awesome. So if that has anything to do with your proposal, a paper like this would be good as well. So it's going to be up to you guys to put in a couple keywords just to start off with and look through the results and see what you can find that would be good for you. Now, um, as I said before, you have to treat these kind of like puzzle pieces. You need to try different combinations. Um, so perhaps um, at this point you would want to try something else, like maybe you want to try public art and mental health. A different search. And you can see I put both of those terms in quotation marks so that they stay together as phrases. Okay, this one is about Toronto. So this is talking about a public art project there that ha had to do with mental health. Um, this one, mental health and gardens. Um, some of you did have some aspect of your proposal that had to do with gardens or that kind of space, so that could be really helpful. Lots of stuff here. So you guys can see um, any of these ones that say academic journal here are gonna be really good quality resources. Um, most of the ones that we have that are ebooks will be and books will be great too. The ones that say periodical, like this one, are most often going to be things like newspaper articles. The top one up here should be a news. Oh, this one actually says news. So there's nothing wrong with news, I don't think, because a lot of people that work in urban planning don't necessarily work in the university system and therefore don't necessarily publish through academic lines. So don't be afraid to use news sources because that is where a lot of urban planning information gets published. All right, so just this is the process. You're gonna put in different things and you're gonna try. Um, I'm gonna try something else here. I'm gonna say urban planning. I wanna do a different kind of search. Let's say that I didn't, um, I don't wanna look for something related to public art right now. I wanna look for something related to lighting. So some of you had different proposals around the lighting in these spaces, particularly like in that alleyway by Nando's. So let me search here and see what this says about lighting. Okay, urban planning stakeholders on nocturnal lighting in the city of Montreal. If you're not familiar, nocturnal means nighttime. So yeah, that, that could be really useful for you guys. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff here. Light as material, lighting as practice, urban lighting and energy. Hmm, interesting, I'm gonna click on that one. This is what the process is like. You know, you treat your keywords as different puzzle pieces, you put different combinations together and you see what looks interesting. This one doesn't actually have a, an abstract. So what I'm gonna do, since I'm kind of interested in this one, um, lighting as practice is particularly what I'm interested in about this one. I'm gonna go to the PDF and I'm gonna look at it for a minute. this a bit bigger here. Science Museum Group Journal. Okay, so if this is a journal, so that's a good good news. It's probably quite um, reliable. So I'm just going to start reading this for a second. Interesting. Okay, so this particular article is very theoretical. 
um, it's almost poetic in its th how theoretical it is. So m some of these articles will be more or less um, interesting or easy to read for you. But let me just see here. Hmm. But there's some interesting stuff here. Like, for example, this line, the potential of light as an affective material cannot be denied and is one reason why light festivals such as Glow in Eindhoven, Fête des Lumières in Lyon, and Vivid in Sydney are proliferating around the globe. Um, and some of you made claims about the emotional impacts of lighting and why you would need it in this alleyway. So that's kind of interesting to me. I feel like you could actually use this a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to show you another trick for a way that you can find more sources once you find found one that talks a little bit about what you're what you're interested in. So the potential of light as an affective material cannot be denied. Okay, so what they mean by that in very general terms is that it has an it evokes an emotional response in people. Um, and they've they've cited a source here. Um, Edensor or Edensor 2012-2017. I'm actually going to go to their reference list at the end because I want to see what this article is that they've cited because it will, should tell me more about that idea. Oh yeah, there's lots of examples too in this one with pictures of how they've used lighting. This is actually a great article for you lighting people. Oh, they even have the lights strung up here the way some, uh, some of you were proposing would happen. Okay, so I want to find their reference list. Okay, so here's that author. Ensor T. Ensor. So they had two different articles by that person. This one is actually an article right here, and number four, and number five is actually a book. You can tell, um, usually if they say what press or publisher it's from, that means it's a book. So, um, one thing you can do when you're looking at different articles in here is you can look at the reference list and then if you see something that looks interesting to you, you can actually then see if we have that thing in our library too, even if it never came up in your search results. So let's say that I want this book here, From Light to Dark, Daylight, Illumination, and Gloom. Interesting. So I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to copy that text. What I can do then is open up a new tab to search in the library. I'm going to put that title in. I'm going to see if we have that book because I'm interested in it. This is a, a, str a search strategy that we sometimes will call citation chaining or citation linking where you find one thing and then you base, um, for you, you find further things based on their citations. Here it is, we have this book and we even have the ebook, so we can read this book online. So there might be something in there that you can find too. Now my point here is not to use, I'm not saying use this specific resource, it may or may not actually be relevant to you. My point here was actually to show you that the process of going to someone's reference list can actually lead you to more sources. And I think that's really important. So in this video, what I've showed you is how to find the library's homepage, which search box to use, and then I've proposed a process of going through and creating different combinations of keywords, not too many at a time, just one or two, that will get you different search results how to look through your search results and see what it is you're even looking at, like academic journal, ebook, etc. How to find the abstract for an article by clicking on the title. And then, um, especially for the articles, how to see the PDFs. And then if you use that citation linking feature that I showed you with this paper where we were able to find this book, From Light to Dark, Daylight, Illumination, and Gloom, I think that you'll be able to do um, a lot to find sources to back up some of the claims that you've made in your um, in your reports both about um, the effects the potential benefits of the project that you've proposed as well as showing examples of other cities that have done similar things to some success <laughs>